This is another sign of the times. An analysis and a commentary. Philippines declares calamity as Typhoon Washito nears 1,000. Philippine President Aquino has ordered an investigation into flash floods and landslides that sent mud and logs crashing down on residents, taking at least 1,000 people on our southern island. The National Disaster Agency said at least 957 were killed and 49 missing on Mindanao after Typhoon Washi triggered the slides. Most of the casualties were in a couple of cities and tens of thousands remain homeless, many sheltering in evacuation centers. Aquino met officials in the two cities worst hit by the cascades that swept down mountainsides as residents of riverside and coastal villages slept in the early hours of Saturday. First priority is to relocate to areas that no longer pose a danger to them. The president told a meeting in one of the affected cities issuing instructions to implement disaster mitigation programs including reforestation. He later told a gathering at a school, we have no desire to engage in finger pointing or to assign blame at a time like this, yet we have an obligation to find out exactly what has happened. Aquino said he had formed a task force to investigate the reasons behind the disaster and to determine whether a nationwide logging ban had been violated. He also declared a state of national calamity, a move intended to release greater funding and ordered the speedy restoration of power and drinking water supplies in all affected villages. If we want this tragedy to be the last of its kind, we need to learn from our mistakes, he said. In other words, this disaster could have been avoided. The disaster agency said more than 338,000 people in 13 provinces were affected by the disaster, with nearly 43,000 still in schools, churches, and gymnasiums. More than 10,000 houses were damaged by the typhoon and the flash floods, of which nearly a third were destroyed or ruined. Many schools, roads, and bridges were also badly damaged. More than 15 million pesos worth of crops, mostly rice and corn, were damaged, but the agricultural department said losses were minimal as the crops were in the early planting stage. The president said the government can also access funds from multilateral financial institutions, including $3 million from the Asian Development Bank and approximately $500 million in low-interest loans from the World Bank. Survivors said huge logs thundering down mountainsides crushed residents. Television footage showed many recovered bodies with arms or hands raised as if reaching out for help or clinging on to something. An official of the British-based Christian Relief and Development Organization, World Vision, said people were fighting for space at evacuation centers. It is really overcrowded. There's almost no space in between people. A group official told ANC Television, diseases are starting to appear. It's really a struggle to manage those evacuation centers. There's a shortage of water and a shortage of food, he said. The state-run Mines and Geosciences Bureau, MGB, said it had warned authorities in the area last year about the need to relocate families living along riverbanks that swelled after one month's worth of rainfall fell over the weekend. This tragedy that happened will be repeated in the future, and therefore there needs to be appropriate preparation to prevent fatalities, said the acting director of the MGB in a television interview. So again, in other words, this tragedy could have been averted. They had been warned beforehand. Anyway, may the Lord rest their souls. And this preventable tragedy is also another sign of the times. The end times, transition days, which is a time of extraordinary happenings, changes, and events. Everything that must change, must change quickly or rapidly and for the better. Because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. 
And that should be a very important question to ask. Again, Daniel chapter 12. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of troubles, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken, some to everlasting life, and some to shame, and everlasting contempt. 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Luke chapter 21, verse 6. As for these things which ye behold, the days will come, in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. 7. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? 8. And he said, Take heed, that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draws near. Go ye not therefore after them. 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. 10. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Yes, it's time for these things to come to pass. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. It's also called fate or destiny, and these are more signs. And if it's not right, God will make it right. 